RGuru's data subset function provides a tool for simple to sophisticated subsetting of data sets. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the student survey data set from the RGuru user's guide repository. If you need assistance loading this data set, please reference our video, Uploading a Data Set from an RGuru Repository. From the Data Toolbar, click on the Functions menu, then scroll down to Subset. Then within the Data Set dropdown, select Student Survey. An alternative way for opening RGuru's Data Subset dialog box is to right click on the data set you wish to subset. Scroll over to the Functions option, and then click on Subset. You'll notice by using this alternative way, the dialog box opens with the data set of interest already filled in. I'm going to start by first creating a subset from a sequence of rows. In the Row Selection box, you'll see two options, Sequence and Logical Expression. This video will focus on the Sequence option. If you are interested in creating subsets using logical expressions, please reference our video, Subsetting Data, using logical expressions. When you click on the sequence button, another dialog box will open. The to from text boxes allow you to specify the starting and ending rows you would like to pick from in your data set. I would like to start with the fifth row and end with the 18th row. The by text box increments the selected rows by a positive value you type in. So if I type in four here, I would be incrementing by four which would then give me the rows 5, 9, 13, and 17. However, I want all the rows from 5 to 18, so let's not use this text box. Finally, the rows text box can be used to select individual rows. I'd like to also include the first and the last row, so I'll type in 1, 75 here to do so. The rows text box can also be used to perform a more advanced row selection using R code. I could have performed this same row selection that you see in this dialog box by typing this code. This concatenates the first row with a sequence of the rows from 5 to 18 by an increment of 1 and also includes the 75th row. Once you have designated the rows of interest, click the Done button and a definition of your selection will be labeled and added to the row subset list. You can repeat this process as many times as you wish and continue to add various row selections to your subset list. Now let's hit on the Select Columns button to perform a column selection. Here you will see the names of all the variables that are in your data set. Simply drag and drop or use the blue arrows to select or unselect the variables you want in your subset. The filter variable text box can help you find specific variables within your data set. For example, if I'm interested in any variables that involve students and TV, I type TV in the filter, and the hours of TV variable is the only variable that meets this criterion. However, I'm going to undo this filter. For this example, I want fast MPH, hours TV, and student sex. Another option for column selection is to select a sequence of columns like we did in our row selection by using the to to from text boxes. Hit the done button and your column selection will be set. However, unlike a row subset selection, you may only have one defined subset of columns. We are now ready to see our subset selection by hitting the preview icon. The case number shows our defined rows followed by all the columns of interest. Now let's save our results as an RGuru dataset and name it subset by RC, meaning rows and columns. By default, RGuru saves the R scripts that we've used to create the subset. When saving in this fashion, you can make future edits to your subset and create new subset selection criteria. By unchecking the parameters box, you have the option to save this subset as an independent dataset. In either case, the newly saved datasets are available throughout the RGuru application. You can also download your subsets directly to your computer as a .csv file. Just click on the download results icon in the upper right hand corner.
If you would like further details and examples of how to use the data subset function, we encourage you to reference the chapter Data Manipulation of a Single Dataset from our user's guidebook.